In the first video of the week, I will be explaining the basics of World Game Constructor. So first, I'll just show you a quick game I made uh, called the Battle of Waterloo. Yes, I know, the game comes with the Battle of Waterloo scenario, but that Battle of Waterloo is far less advanced and historically accurate compared to the one I created by me. Um, so here we go, Battle of Waterloo. Ah, so here we can see uh, Lord Wellington's British army, uh, Napoleon's First French Empire army. Further to the west, we have um, Grouchy's uh, right wing army of the French, and to the north, of course, we have Field Marshal Blucher's army, the Prussian army. Anyhow, I'll just quickly show you this. Um, well, the allies are in red, and the French are in blue. Okay, uh, this is a corpse, but I've put it as a company to make the unit smaller, and of course I've changed the flag. You can have a variety of flags and icons, but I've of course chosen the French due to it being French. I've made a variety of those. Uh, they're command units, so fighting units go within command units, and these are fighting units. I put infantry with the, as that icon. The cavalry is that icon and uh, the artillery as the icon with supply as the icon. Okay, but let's resume it to the infantry role. I've made it so the class is infantry, where you can go a variety of stuff. Movement range, so that's how far I can move in one turn. I put as 1.5. Attack firepower, plus 51. 100 is the highest and 0 is the lowest, although if you do 0, they won't do any damage. Defence, same but a bit lower, because the French were more attacking. And the firepower range is 50 metres. Okay, so let's go for that. And I've done a variety of those, of course you can see, you can see the artillery, I've done the artillery. Of course, due to artillery being able to fire further, I've done artillery as a further firepower range. And there's the cavalry. Okay, let's close that one down, and go to the Allied Armies. Uh, here's the first card, Prince of Orange, and of course that is the same as the French. Oh, of course, we have the United Kingdom flag. And they've had Maitland Bing, uh, different brigades, and their defence firepower is a bit lower by one, and their attack firepower is also lower by one. Once again, the infantry, the movement range hasn't stayed the same, has stayed the same, and the FP range has also stayed the same. Okay, let's get rid of that. Then we come to the Prussians. Theirs is a bit higher, although the rest of that is all the same. With the Prussians, of course I of course use the Prussian flag, however I must have written for me that not all the flags of the countries of the world are on here, just ones that they might use in battles created by us. Okay, that is all. Okay, let's go with that. On the flags, this is the uh, kick victory club locations. Um on the front it says how many look how many percent is needed and the unit visibility range is a three point five K. I've uh, done the victory content as maximum turns is 9, 9, 9, 9, 9, 9, 9, so you can just continuously play it. And the default one is the enemy, because of course they're going in real life. Anyway, let's go back to this. So they to win, the allies would need to also have the Bell Alliance, Chelleroy, as well as the ones they already have. And for the French to win, they would also need Hugamont, La Haye Saint, Mont Saint Jean, Waver, and the Elven Tree Crossroads. Okay, here's one here, the Elm Tree Crosswords. Uh, there, sorry about that. And that's the Lehe Sound. Then we have La Bella Alliance there. And I've also put them in the places where the Bella Alliance is, of course, where Lehe Saint is, and where the Elm Tree Crosswords are, though that is not named as. Oh, there we are. Okay. To move units, you basically you merely click on it, click that button, let's say you want to move it there, 
and move it back to there. Okay. And, to, and for the flags, it's the exact same. Click. Oh, sorry about that. Click on this one instead. Move to there. Click on it again. Move back. Okay. This icon here is to add in terrain. So let's say this large thing here, this brown thing, that is elevated ground. Sorry about that. As of course the allies were on a ridge, I've also done that there. You can delete that by holding it down. Getting off that first, holding it down. I don't decide not to work right now. Oh well. You you get the idea though, if you hold it down it'll come up. Um yeah, so you can make a variety of them. All of their different benefits and this benefits okay next we have these this shows the higher commands so basically the command units i mentioned before in here so they'll let's say that they'll show that flag where the first corpse is and so let's see here so as you can see there's one here this big faded united kingdom flag if i click on that it should go and it'll just show the fighting units okay and you click it back to return it Okay, on here, it'll show, I mean, it remove the, the added terrain, as you, as you can see here, so the, we'll go back on that. It'll show the triangle I've shown you before, and if I click on that, it's gone. Okay, this shows you the normal, so he's normal, of course, the map you see in Google Maps. Then we have satellite, so what, what they see from the satellite, this is one I used. Uh, no, I use, and then there's hybrid, I used hybrid, sorry. Which is basically just satellite, but also has the names. Um, terrain, so like, let's say where forests are. And custom, where you can import a map. Yeah, if you want to, uh, ruler, just do the distance. Let's do the distance from there to there. I'll say the distance, so you go click there and there, you can't, it won't show the distance, of course. And um, to input a unit, let's say, let's just make a quick one now. Napoleon, fighting unit, yeah, that's, I decide, 12, 12, 20, 12, mm, cops. A bit weird that, change the name. Ch yeah, they say change the name, be like, um, prop, I guess. Um, fighting unit, can we change the command or something? If we change it to command, the layout will change differently. There's a corpse, you can change it to regiment, to see how the size you want it to be. Symbol, as always, as I showed you before. Infantry, let's put it as a, uh, yep, infantry, yep. You can change the firepower and defense power, so let's say, uh, uh, we can't go that high, of course. 56 and 46. And FP range we can put as 10. It's a long firing thing, and we can put that as 240. For example, and let's go into here. It'll come up with here. You won't be able to click on anything else until you put this unit down. So you click there. And there we go. It's a bit large, yes, but because it's a corpse. Then we merely move it to a better place over there. And then we can go back onto there, click Napoleon, go down to the prop, and delete it. I may remind you that if you delete a command unit, the, all the fighting units within that command unit will also be deleted. So if you want to do it quicker and say just click delete, delete, delete. Yep. Yeah. Okay, that is all for there. As I've shown you before, we have, you can change it to, on here as well, so what it shows you when you first join, and it can also change it there. If you want to do like a naval battle, change it to water. Unit splits and supply. So the supply, if you turn that off, you won't have to, you won't have to build supply units. I mean, you have to build supply units. Well, if you keep this on, you won't have to build supply units. Units, oh, go away. Unit split, you can split a unit into four, okay? Let's put that on. 
Oh, that's just Jewish. Okay, you can change the name and the flags and the colours. I changed it to Poland because, of course, I've oh, got him. Uh, scenario in progress, Battle of Waterloo, Wellington. So let's go with that now. Save. Okay, let's play scenario. Let's play the same one over again. It'll give you the option. You can either play Napoleon, which is the blue forces I've shown you. Wellington, the red forces, which are also the Prussians. Or spectator mode, where you don't play any. You just watch the AI on the, com on the computer or the phone do the moves. Okay, I say let's do Wellington. So go into here. Map initialization failed. Okay, you can click on here. This is where the units are stationed with the small units of cars. And that is their weapons range display. Okay, so there's a cars with fire shot. I was telling you like 50 or something kilometers. That's how far they can fire around. Okay, ruler of cars again. Same again. Okay, let's turn that off. The log. You can choose to view this. And so when you move a men, it will show where they've moved to and if they've attacked. Of course, you know this button here. It will get rid of the stuff. This gets rid of the command. This will split, as I said before. You, you, it allows unit splits. Okay. So now that unit there has been split into foot. It says sections. Okay. This unit here. Will defend so it won't, it'll barely move. And this is the attack button. So let's say if I want to attack, I can't see any of the units yet because the range. Okay, this button will make it move, and that is the end of the turn. Although for some reason, they are not working right now. I have to delve deep into that. Let's. Can't, nope. Let's go back on, onto another one. One I haven't made. If it were into the Balsaratoga, I'll be the British. Ah, here we are. Front lines are established, okay? Let's, let's just execute my turn and see what happens during the turn. Okay, as you can see, it, it initialises what's happened. The AI and these yellow flips here is where fighting's happening. Okay, this shows you where the front lines are. This, which of course you can change the map again. Okay, that's all, and hope you enjoyed the video, don't forget to uh, like and subscribe, and the next video will be coming out very soon, I promise. Anyway, that's all, uh, thank you.